In this video, we are going to go through company selection and product selection when it comes to a whole life insurance policy set up for maximum cash value. So when it comes to whole life insurance policies, there are a lot of life insurance companies in the US and there are a lot of products to choose from as well. So how do you get the best possible option? Or how do you prevent yourself from being in a situation like this where you take out a policy, you're led to believe it's the best possible option only to find out later a better option existed. Maybe it was with a different company, or maybe it was with the same company, but that policy could have been set up differently for higher cash value for you if the commission was lowered or something along those lines. Perhaps it was just a different product that could have been selected. So we're going to go through different companies and what I would recommend when it comes to company selection and then different products that are available as well. We're not going to go through all of the products, but I'll hit on some of the most commonly used whole life insurance products, typically what we show in terms of options. These are also uh, what a lot of people who are considered ultra wealthy and corporations will select when it comes to whole life insurance policies set up for maximum cash value. Let's get on into it. So to begin, when it comes to company selection, there are a lot of life insurance companies in the US. Then we have what are considered your four major mutual companies which are as follows. We've got Mass Mutual. These are in no particular order, by the way. We've got Mass Mutual, Guardian, New York Life, and Northwestern Mutual. When you look at these four carriers, when you look at their financial ratings, safety ratings, cream of the crop, if you were to look at what is referred to as the Comdex score or Comdex ranking, they'll all range between a 98 and 100, which is, which is literally as high as it can go, a 100 that is. When you look at their size as companies, they are all massive, especially compared to other mutual life insurance companies. But the biggest selling point, in my opinion, is when you look at policies that have actually lived the test of time, meaning not just illustrations, not projections, not even their dividend history, but real policies, we see that they have a track record of delivering strong cash values to policyholders. And again, I just wanna emphasize the actual performance, not just illustrations. This is so important here because the industry in itself, typically how people buy whole life insurance policies, those that are interested in the cash value, they look at an illustration. What does the illustration display and the numbers that look the best is typically the option that people gravitate toward. However, when we look at reality, crumbling those illustrations up and throwing them out the window, or if they're a PDF, deleting them, looking at reality, we've seen whole life insurance products with these four companies consistently deliver among the strongest internal rates of return to policyholders. In short, they've delivered the greatest overall value, which is often what people are looking for. Uh, quick side note here, Northwestern Mutual heavily sells this aspect, the actual performance, and a big reason why is if you were to look at these companies' dividend interest rates right now, Northwestern is at the lowest. This is 2022 carrier's dividend interest rates. We've got Guardian at 565 and then Mass Mutual at 6%. So Northwestern's at the bottom. They've been at the bottom for a long time. However, they've always delivered. We've seen them deliver strong cash values to their policyholders. They take care of them. In fact, if I had the choice to pick Northwestern Mutual and I could not select one of these three companies, we often use our company that is Mass Mutual and Guardian, but if I don't have those options available, I could pick Northwestern Mutual or a smaller carrier. I'd have a hard time not selecting Northwestern Mutual if I could specify exactly how I wanted it designed. Why I would have a hard time not selecting them is because I've seen them deliver. Now, because we have the other products, the other companies available with Mass Mutual, Guardian, New York Life, that's where you can close your eyes and literally pick one of them out of a hat. We've seen all of those four major mutual companies consistently deliver strong, real results to their policyholders. But that would be my recommendation in terms of company selection. Next, we've got products. So there are a lot of policy options when it comes to different life insurance companies. And we've got three main categories here. You've got traditional whole life insurance policies, then you have what are referred to as high early cash value life insurance policies, 
and limited pay policies. I'm going to go through bullet points on each of them. But here's the big thing. Regardless of the product you select, when it comes to the policy design, this is the most important piece. Doesn't matter what type of policy you pick, we can design them all the same. We're very, very similar. Some companies have some unique limitations, like Guardian's 10 pay product. We can only illustrate a maximum of five times the base premium in PUAs, whereas all other products, it's 10x. But you'll have some rare exceptions like that. For the most part, you can design policies equally across the board. What I mean when I say that is if you want the ability to pay in $100,000 per year and maximum cash value is your goal, what we would do here is we've got our base premium, term rider, and then paid up additions rider. Base premium, we would set at 10%, call that $10,000. Then we will add a term insurance rider as well. That might cost another $1,000, depends on my age, health, and number of factors, but let's call it $1,000. Pur purpose of a term rider, that adds more death benefit, which does what? We've got mech limit circled here. It increases my mech limit. The death benefit has a direct relationship to that mech limit on a life insurance policy. We can actually set that mech limit wherever we want. And then we've got our paid up additions rider, which is really how we optimize the cash value, which if we've got 100K going in in this example, we'd have about $89,000 per year going toward PUA. So I've got 90%. We can round down 1% in this example. <laughs> now, this does depend on the company, but we can design it and often do to be very, very flexible. This way, you as the policyholder have the option to add money into it each year. Imagine being told you can fund your policy at $100,000 per year, but you do not have to. You've got the flexibility to bounce payments up and down at discretion. When it comes to the cash value, premium dollars with any of these products result in the lowest amount of cash value compared to the PUA rider. And why, why I specify base premium compared to the PUA rider is if you were to take, let's call it a mass mutual, high early cash value product, that base premium is not that low. You get about 80% of the base premium with the mass mutual high early cash value product that shows up in cash value in the first year alone. However, the PUA rider is even more attractive than that. You'll see whatever that PUA payment is, over 90% of that show up in cash value in the first year. So in short, reducing the base premium Increasing the PUA rider will give you the strongest overall cash value, especially looking at actual performance, not just projections and such, which is so, so important to look at. So what I want to add here, this is an important piece where sometimes we see people get pushed back here, people meaning you, if you're interested in a policy, getting pushed back from an agent, is when you take a life insurance policy, the lower you drive the premium, the lower the agent commission is, period. That is how it will work. You'll see that in our commission videos. But then number two, company selection also has an impact on agent commissions. When you look at the four major mutual companies and compare the maximum commissions they pay to brokers compared to other life insurance companies, they are the lowest. So what? What an agent often looks at is, okay, because it is my business as an agent, if I'm going to reduce the premium and use one of these companies, which pay among the lowest commissions to me, compared to smaller carriers where I get a higher commission and I can raise the premium to get even a higher commission, often we've seen pushback to policyholders when a policyholder being you, a potential client, is selecting what option they wanna go with, They'll get pushed back here. But commission decide, here's how I look at it. These guys have consistently delivered the strongest cash values to policyholders, and these designs also provide the strongest overall cash values to policyholders. So what is in the best interest of the policyholder? If it was me, which option would I go with? And then make sure clients are also being shown that. So 
How to decide? Well, what we will often do to simplify things, most people we work with will show two different companies to start with perhaps two to three different products and the same dollar amount going into a policy. So if you said, hey, I want the ability to put in $100,000 per year, maybe it's $10,000 per year, show me what that looks like and I want to see a mass mutual high early cash value, a limited pay product, and maybe I'll look at this hybrid policy as well. We'll show those different options with the 100K per year going in. And if you're uncertain as to how much you want to pay in per year, then we'll show the 100K per year, 50K per year, and then maybe a 200K. Or maybe it's 2K, 5K, 10K, depends on your situation. But a number of different options, but at the same time, trying to keep it simple where you're not overwhelmed with 10 million different life insurance illustrations, which I have done in the past. And I apologize if I have done that to you. I will always aim to simplify, <laughs> simplify things more. So <laughs> let's go through the different product options quickly here because this will be beneficial just to equip you with some knowledge if you'd like to understand how the different products work. So when we look at the different options here, we've got traditional whole life insurance policies, high early cash value life insurance policies, limited pay policies, and then this hybrid policy. Beginning with a traditional whole life insurance policy, you'll typically see this on a life insurance illustration referred to as a whole life 121, a whole life 100, sometimes a life paid up at 99. What those numbers represent is the age you can literally pay into the policy. So premiums are due in a whole life 100 product until you're 100 years old. Now people usually don't pay into it that long, but that's how long you can pay into it if you would like to. What you'll see with traditional whole life insurance policies with respect to the cash value, you'll often see the lowest upfront cash values. You'll see the longest break-even point. The break-even point is typically between five and seven years. And the main reason why is when we look at the base premium component of a traditional whole life insurance policy, like a whole life 100 product, it does not show up in cash value in the first and second year of the policy. If you were to go back to our live policy design video where we designed that whole life 100 product, you'll see exactly that. Base premium dollars did not show up in cash value in the first and second year. Second year, you got a couple hundred bucks, but it didn't show up. <laughs> the minimal amount did, and it took a long time to break even. Between five to seven years is the average. So that's the drawback to a traditional whole life insurance product. An advantage is you've got the ability to pay into it for a long period of time, literally into 100, until 100. Now you can stop funding earlier if you decide to do so, meaning, if it's payable until 100 years old, that doesn't mean you have to pay into it until you're 100, which is nice. Long term, the cash value growth is decent. It's not the best compared to other life insurance products, but it is decent. What I will add here, you will often see strong guaranteed cash values here because when you look at traditional products like a whole life 100 or a whole life 121, you'll see that guaranteed rate often at 3.75%. And a quick side note to recap the traditional products. If you have an older product with a 4% guarantee rate, the results are likely more favorable. Those older products, traditional whole life insurance products that had a 4% guarantee rate were very, very attractive. We used them a lot. Since the rules of the game has changed with the industry update that went into full force 2022, we don't use them as much. And the main reason why is people don't gravitate toward them as much as they see different options. But it is an option for that some people do consider. Disadvantage, weak upfront cash values. Base premium is overcharged in the first and second year. Advantage, decent long-term performance, strong guarantees, and the ability to pay into the policy as long as you'd like, literally until 100, sometimes longer. High early cash value product, kind of the name you will have very strong early cash values with this policy. So two companies here, high early cash value, and then we've got an executive strategies whole life policy. This high early cash value product is a product mass mutual offers, and the executive strategies whole life product is a product guardian offers. The executive strategies whole life product is really meant for corporations uh, that are taking policies out on their executives. It's kind of in the name there. You can obtain the policy as an individual. However, 
there is a minimum base premium requirement of $100,000, which does exclude a lot of people from it, especially if you're paying in 100K per year, that's the maximum you're ever going to pay in. That wouldn't make sense. This product really makes sense. The people that we work with that typically select this option are folks that are paying in literally a million dollars per year. This way they've got a minimum $100,000 base premium with the ability to go up to $1 million per year and they can really stuff the product. That's where it's a nice option. Or if it's a company taking out policies on a number of executives in which the base premium requirement is lower for the company. And then you've got Mass Mutual, which is available to anyone with their high early cash value product. But here's the big difference. If you take the Mass Mutual high early cash value product, the base premium in the first year, you'll see 80% of that show up in cash value. So if you've got a $10,000 base premium, 8,000 shows up just about. With the high early, with the, uh, I'm sorry, Executive Strategies whole life product, you'll see about 95% show up in cash value in the first year, which is a cash rich product. So you get high upfront cash value when they're blended with a high PUA ratio. Both examples here would be over 90%. Break even point between years four and five. The long-term performance, this may be inferior to other products. Depends on the company and how long I'm paying into it, a couple factors. If I'm comparing, I'll, I'll say this just to provide some certainty. If I'm comparing company to company, a mass mutual higher early cash value with a mass mutual 10 pay or 15 pay, the 10 pay and 15 pay will generate stronger internal rates of return. Limited pay products are geared for long-term performance. Those products in particular with mass mutual have lower PUA fees, they're attractive. The higher early cash value product, however, you've got the ability to fund indefinitely. Age 85 with mass mutual, age 90 with guardian. You can stop funding early if desired, meaning I can pay into it until I'm 85, but I don't have to do that. And it's commonly used by companies looking to position the cash value as an asset on the balance sheet. Pretty cool. When we look at limited pay policies, so these can be very attractive. A lot of people like this who are not into the idea of making payments for a long period of time, take a 10 pay and a 15 pay product. Limited pay, when we see the term 10 pay, means I can pay into it for 10 years. After 10 years, premiums are no longer due. I cannot add more premiums into it. Now, advantages to these products, strong upfront cash values, assuming it's blended with PUAs and such, between 85 and 90%. Again, when I say assuming blended with PUAs, if I've got a 10% base premium and a 90% PUA, with a 10 pay or with a 15 pay, that is where I will see between 85 and 90%. If I just take a standard 100% base premium 10 pay product, we're gonna see between 30 and 35% in cash value in the first year. So it's gotta be designed properly. The break even point between years four and five, similar to that high early cash value product, but long term looks a lot stronger, strong, strong long term IRR and cash value. Now, if I take a 10 pay, I can pay into it for a maximum of 10 years. However, I can stop funding it earlier, earlier if I want to. This is commonly used by both business owners and real estate investors looking to fund a policy with a lump sum. As an example, say someone, a real estate investor has 500K, he wants to move it into a policy over four years. What he'll do, what we will do is set it up where he pays in 125K per year for four years. That gets a, that gets a total of $500,000 into a policy. In, most, in some cases, it'll be a four pay, depends on his age and such. But I get the money into the policy. From the beginning, he says, after I get this 500 grand into the policy, I do not want to pay more money into the policy. They make that very clear up front. How I view this is as a high yield is as a high yield savings asset grows between three to five percent. I've got the tax free benefit if I don't mech it out or anything like that, and I can access it like a personal line of credit 
instead of accessing equity in some property I own, instead of just going to my bank account to access cash, like I like the idea of using this or leveraging it as a personal line of credit as the years pass. That's where a lot of people use these products, whether it's 500K, a million bucks, everyone's situation is different. And by the way, if you wanted to continue to pump money into the policy, he can, as long as that product will allow for payments. But nice options to be aware of there. And then we've got the hybrid whole life policy. So if you were to look, look up hybrid whole life policy on the internet, I made that name up. <laughs> so you won't, you won't see this offered by a life insurance company, not to my knowledge at least, not at the date of shooting this video. But where I came up with this term, is specific to Guardian's L95 life insurance policy. Why I like to call it a hybrid product is because it's kind of in between a traditional whole life product and a high early cash value product. It's like a traditional product in the sense that the base premium dollars don't show up in cash value in the first year. Remember what a traditional product is? The first and second year. With this, it's only year one. So beginning year two, the base premium comes back to work for me. I get stronger upfront cash values between 80 and 85% and break even right around year five, which is better than a traditional policy, which is nice. And when you do things right from a design standpoint, from a funding standpoint, it functions very, very similar to a traditional policy speaking long term. It's got decent, very strong long-term performance when I look at how that illustrates both guaranteed and non-guaranteed, and I can capture strong upfront cash value benefits. And because it's an L95 policy, which means I can pay into it up until the age of 95, I can keep on feeding it for a long period of time. Now, because it's with Guardian, if, you see, if you've watched our uh, Mass Mutual and Guardian flexibility video, the sweet spot is if I want to max fund a Guardian policy, call it for 10 years and then stop, if it's L95, someone might say, I like the idea of max funding it with a term rider attached for 10 years. And then from the 11th year onward, I'm going to pay in 20K a year or 10K a year. I'm gonna take my foot off the gas a bit. Very common to see that product used in that particular case where they can capture strong upfront cash values so they can use it for opportunities when they come around and still have the option to feed the beast for a long period of time. So quick overview there, or not a quick overview, an overview on product selection. Here's the big thing, how to decide, because we've refined company selection and product selection probably down to about 1% of what is available in the general marketplace with the different companies and products that companies offer. So how do I decide just with this 1% here? Here's often what we do. Most we work with, this gives you a little bit of an idea with, uh, with respect to our process. Most we work with will show two to three different options. Maybe it's a high early cash value, a limited pay product, and then a hybrid policy. Or maybe instead of that hybrid, that L95, it's a traditional policy. But two to three different products with two different companies, and this is just generally speaking, sometimes we'll show more, it depends how much you'd like to see. It's always about you, the person taking a policy out, will show as many options or as little options as you'd like. But typically we start here, this way you get a healthy overview of different options without being overwhelmed and then look at some different funding scenarios, especially if you are unsure of how much you'd like to pay into the policy. And then you get to see samples of the different products side by side. But in a case like this, seeing a couple different options, you'll see what products give me more cash value up front, which products give me the opportunity to continue to pay into the policy for a long period of time, what products and companies offer more flexibility, Really, I get to visualize everything on a side-by-side -side spreadsheet, and then we'll add in the additional pieces as far as, well, here's the flexibility with Guardian. Here's the advantage to Mass Mutual's 15 pay product compared to their high early cash value product. Help you refine that decision-making process so you don't have buyer's remorse. Finding out after the fact you would have went with 
a 10-pay product if only Steve would have shown it to you. That's the kind of stuff we like to avoid upfront. And again, what we try to do here is give you all of the information without overwhelming you. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks again, and we will see you on the next video. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.